Well, for me personally, um, I actually did not expect Obama to be uh, elected. I didn't mm. even expect him to win the Democratic nomination. I mm. thought Hillary Clinton you know, had it hands down, and I felt that way because he's a black man, <laughs> and I felt like institutionalized racism in the United States was still so strong mm. that there was no way that he was going to become the, the nominee of the Democratic Party. And then when he won the nomination, I said, okay, he got the nomination, but America is not going to elect a black president. And uh, of course, Lorenzo was arguing with me all along, oh, he's going to be elected because the, the politicians, the bankers need him, uh, need him to be president of the United States to help kind of restore the country's image after eight years of George Bush. So I was a big skeptic that he was even going to be elected. I'll be honest about it. I had mm -hmm. no, you know, didn't think he was going to be elected. Um, so, but he was, so obviously I was wrong. The election of Obama, um, it has, Obama's election was meant to uh, derail, co-op, pacify any kind of radical political movements or ideas in the United States. Uh, his election has been a severe blow to radical uh, political action in the United States, whether it's, I don't care whether it's black, <coughs> Asian, white, whatever it is, it's, it has been destructive mm. to any radical, uh, it's been one of the most serious blows. I mean, the destruction of the black power movement uh, certainly was a serious blow then, but his election was had been a very serious blow because he's black. You know, we were meant to feel like, oh, we've got a black president mm. now. Everything's going to be all right. There were even some people running around saying, well, Obama's election means that America is now a post-racial society, which is absolutely absurd. The average black person knows that. They know there's still racism, and other people know it too. But at any rate, uh, we feel that his, uh, his election has been uh, very uh, destructive uh, to any kind of radical political action. It's been meant to, as I said, to co-opt uh, that, that action. If you, uh, in your country, uh, for instance, you have a, we, we have a serious problem so far as black people in America are concerned. We have the highest level of black unemployment in the United States since the Great Depression. Wow. Now, Obama is not Obama's fault that happened. The conditions that caused that were in place before he became president. But he has not enacted any policies whatsoever to deal with it mm. or you know, even spoken about it. Mm. Uh, even if he may not have total control, he, there is a Congress and he has to mm. negotiate things with Congress. But he has said nothing about that. We have mass black imprisonment in the United States. America has 5% of the world's population, but, but the country has 25% of the incarcerated people in the world are in the United States. We just have 5% of the population. Mm, and the majority of those people are black people, uh, or, or, or Hispanic uh, people, Puerto Rican people. Obama has said nothing. He has enacted no policies to, to deal with that. In fact, many people who are in prison are there because of the so-called drug war mm. in the United States. And they've gotten these really long, excessively long sentences. His attorney general, the attorney general of the United States, the top legal lawyer, who is also African American, has said he's going to try to do something to modify these sentences, but haven't seen any action. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Obama has, under the Obama administration, the United States has had the highest level of deportation of immigrants than any other president. I know the issue of immigration is very, uh, and deportation of immigrants is a very serious issue here in the mm -hmm. UK, but the United States certainly, certainly cannot criticize the UK. And the people who are the leftists, radicals, they don't want to talk about the fact that, you know, Obama, that, that this is the highest level of deportation of immigrants. They don't want to talk about the fact that imprisonment, mass imprisonment of black people is at its highest levels. They don't want to talk about the highest level uh, of, of black unemployment. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, um, we view his election uh, as negative. That's what, that's what we think. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting you say that. Obama's actually been a destructive force, not just a pacifying one. Mm -hmm. um, and with, uh, you know, a lot of people had aspirations that there's a black president, as you said, there's going to be a great change. And that was even his slogan, right? That, you know, mm -hmm. a change has come and he's um, used the... Uh, the legacy of Martin Luther King to sort of position himself as a sort of 
a black leader, not just a, the president of the United States, but also a black leader in the sense that he's saying he's continuing the legacy of the civil rights movement. But we've seen recently that the Voting Rights um, Act of 1968 has been struck down by um, the, by the um, Supreme Court. Um, we've also seen Trayvon Martin with the Stand Your Ground law in, in Florida and it being used like perversely in Trayvon Martin's case, but then also again with Maurice, Marissa Alexander, who at the moment is um, fighting a, an appeal. So what I wanted to know is in terms of like the civil rights legacy and your, invo your active involvement in it as Black Panthers and fighting mm. um, for human rights of, of black people, whether it's in prison, whether it's in the street. Um, what do you, how do you see um, like the civil rights legacy in relation to Obama? And I'd like to get both of your views on that. <clears throat> I really believe that um, uh, Obama, um, someone told us, we, we wrote an article uh, called um, uh, Black Faces in High Places. And um, in that article, we quoted an individual who said that uh, Barack Obama was the 21st century face of fascism, uh, the friendly fascism, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. you know, so his, his role is to, as Janana was saying, to neutralize protests, uh, but to extend empire. And uh, so he has done nothing for the black community. He, never, he didn't even come into office. Uh, with any realistic program of doing anything for the black community in terms of the, the, the kind of targeted forms of oppression that we have historically faced. And, um, you know, basically uh, he has opened the door for a number of opportunist politicians from the left mm. to serve with him more or less. You know, you've got uh, one guy down in, in Mississippi that uh, been, he's been elected the mayor of the, of the city of Jackson, Mississippi, and he had been in previous years calling for a, a nation state of five southern states and all this sort of thing. Uh, now he's working with Obama. You've got um, one guy who was supposedly been a communist, uh, uh, you know, a youth organizer or something mm -hmm. or other. Now he, he was in Obama's administration. So you've got a kind of opportunism mm -hmm. that's, that's taking place right along with Obama and his activities. And his activities... As, as has been pointed out, have been harmful to the black community, uh, especially in terms of law enforcement, in terms of these number of, of black people who are being shot and killed every year. Everybody admits that uh, there's upwards of a thousand people killed every year by the American police forces. And this has been going on for quite some time now. He could do something about this if, if he so chose to do, you know, because he's got a, a hit, he's over the, uh, the so called uh, FBI and, mm. and the, the Department of Justice. Uh, he could do something if he wished to about the massive number of black people in the prison system, mm. you know, where uh, blacks and uh, 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 Puerto Ricans and, and also other Latinos make up something like uh, 75 to 80 percent of those in the prison system. Wow. And so we're talking about almost two million people. And um, he could do something about this and he could do something about poverty. Uh, and unemployment, which is uh, at record levels in the black community. In fact, depression levels, mm. in, in the Great Depression levels in the black community. He could do something about all of these things. But his role is to work for the bankers and the central bank especially and uh, to see to it that uh, Wall Street is furnished, whatever Wall Street wishes, in terms of uh, capital and in terms of, of weak legislation or whatever. That's his role. And uh, his role as a, as a warmonger, you know, uh, you know, bombing essentially most of the, most of the people of the world, many many countries, uh, having declared war. We talked about this even before he took office. We tried. We wrote an article about this, as I said, and we tried to put this out to uh, activists and radicals, and um, and had been pretty much, you know, isolated as a result of that, you know. Uh, if not attacked, some right. people attacked us and so forth, and some people still do. I mean, some mm. people wake up, waking up, waked up and saw it, and woken up and saw it, I should say, and then others still continue to ride his boat down the river. You know, mm, mm, <laughs> mm. Uh, so our thing is that Obama is part of the enemy class. Yeah, we're going to have to fight o Obama's administration just like we fought Bush and all the rest of yeah. them. You know, he's a representative of capital. He is not a representative of, of labor and of the people. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's really important for us in this period to diffuse some of this stuff. So we do organizing, education, and all this, and we co have come out 
and told people we are opposed to electoral politics, period. Yeah. Because electoral politics is one of the things that maintains empire and, and, and also uh, misleads the masses of people, mm -hmm. puts them to sleep. And uh, so we've we got a tough job in that sense, but this is where we're going.